You know, I just want to make this little video here as a reminder to myself and to others that whatever we sow, we're going to reap. That's what the Bible teaches. The world, we used to say, what goes around, comes around. Some people call it karma. Common. You can even call it Virginia if you want. The fact is that when you plant a seed, you're going to get a harvest. And I noticed that some people that commit crimes, they break the law. Really, the law breaks you. You decide to rob a bank, rob a store, murder someone, kidnap, rape, whatever the crime is. And then you get caught, what we call, you get busted. And now you facing the music, you're in jail, bang, the reality hits you. And you got to survive. You're like, eh, I'm surviving this place. I got to do some time. I'm caught. And listen, no matter how bad you are, you could be John Dillinger, Al Capone, Billy the Kid, Jesse James, whoever you are. When you go to jail, there's others in there that are badder than you. There's a whole bunch of Al Capones in there. Billy the Kids, Jesse James. And so now you got to deal with that. And what I've noticed, 35 years of prison ministry, 10 years in and out of prisons in the old days when I was on drugs, 50 years or 51 years under my belt dealing with pr crime, prisoners, drug addicts, drug programs, I worked 35 years as a drug counselor, dealt with parolees. So I got a little bit of experience in dealing with this. I noticed that a lot of uh, inmates, they turn to God. That's what we call jailhouse religion. In the army, in the World War II, they used to call it fo foxhole conversions. Foxholes, you know, you throw they throw bombs and bullets, and you're in a foxhole. And you, know, God, forgive me. I want to, I want to, I want to accept Jesus. So it was a foxhole conversion. In prison, they call it jail's house religion. They turn to God, and uh, some of them are legit. I've met some that are really serious. They got saved. They got the spirit filled. And of course, when they go out, that's when it you put it to practice. And I know people that have come out and never went back, and they serve the Lord. Praise God for them. But there's a lot of them that are just looking for a loophole. I got to get into the word, man. Maybe God have mercy on me and they'll release me and they'll forgive me. They'll lower my sentence. God will touch the judge heart and they'll set me free. But I want to tell you something, my brother. What is it? Bozo, your name? I want to tell you something. Listen, there are consequences. You sow, you reap. God will deliver you. God will save you. God will heal you, but you're still going to do the time. I know a lot of inmates that are doing big time, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, got saved in prison. They ain't come home. They're going to do their time. But they become really into the Lord. Everything is about church and the Lord and the scriptures. The proof is in the pudding when you get out. Are you going to follow through? Because I also know some that God did hear their prayer and released them Mir miraculously. Judge Lord the sentence or they just came home and then they took the Bible and they left it in their cell. I guess for when they come back, they can find it right there. So my point is that you sow a seed, you're going to reap. If you sow a seed of corruption, and you're doing bad things, whatever it is, you're going to sow the same seed. It may not happen overnight. Bam! But one day it's going to smack you in the face <laughs> and bamboozle you. You have to deal with it. You treat your wife, mister, ma'am, man. If you treat your wife bad, you're mean to her. You disrespect her. You put her down. You cheat on her. You criticize her. That's going to come back to hurt you, man. Bite you right in the como se llama. 
Maybe she'll just stop loving you. One day you wake up, she ain't there no more. I seen guys, drug programs, running around using drugs, neglecting their family, forget about their kid. They steal money from their kid's mouth, feed them. They take it for their drugs. And then now they're in the program crime. <laughs> Lord, bring my wife back. I'm so sorry. Wife going on with somebody else. I've seen that happen a hundred times. She found a good man. Take care of her. Bless her. Treat her good. And you're in the program. God, forgive me. If my wife come back, I'll serve you. What if she don't come back? Are you still going to serve him? You can't bargain with God. You put yourself in that hole. You shouldn't be praying, God, bring my wife back. Or God, let her find a good man. Let her move on. Because I ain't do nothing good for her. You selfish. Excuse me. Anyway, here's what I'm saying. You sow that seed, you're going to reap. If it's corrupted, if it's mean, if it's evil, you sow the seed of love. You sow the seed of kindness. You sow the seed of joy. You sow the seed of giving, being generous. You sow the seed of forgiveness. You sow the seed of peace. You sow the seed of unity. That's what you're going to get back. People are going to bless you. God's going to put it in people's hearts to bless you, to favor you. You'll walk in God's favor. You'll walk in Psalm 23, verse 6. Surely goodness. Hey, goodness, what's up, babe? And mercy, mercy are going to follow you all the days of your life. God will command his angels to watch over you because you've been sowing seeds of kindness, of God's love, of God's joy, of God's peace, of the word of God. People are talking bad about you. They stepped on your blue suede shoes, but you're still doing good. The Bible says in Acts chapter 8 that Jesus Jesus went around doing good. He was healing all that was sick and afflicted of the devil because God was with him. When you go around doing good, my friend, no matter how they treat you, God is with you and he'll prosper you. He'll lift you up. He'll bless you. Let me finish with this. I was in Teen Challenge. Drug program, residential, Christian base. I was there for a whole year. I was singing with the choir. Kind of snuck in there because I can't sing, but I, I can hold a note. But I was moving around with them. They traveled all over. They took me with. Come on, Sammy. Yeah, they always saw me praying and seeking the face of God. We, we need somebody like this. For a whole year, guys that were new, six months, two months, three months, they were sharing testimonies in the churches. They'll call them out. Me a whole year in the back, the last guy in the, in the choir singing. Didn't move, didn't say anything, didn't complain for a whole year. Just kept on praying, kept on seeking the face of God. I pray for the leaders. I pray for the church. I pray for the pastors we visited. We went all over the south and, 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 and some north state preaching the gospel. After a year, listen to me, after one year, the director of the program came to me out of nowhere. I was in the cafeteria. I used to work serving food. And he came up to me and says, your name's Sam, Sam Duenio. I said, yeah, that's Sir, that's my name, sir. He says, hey, I never talked to this man. I've seen him. He preached many times. I know who he was. Everybody knew who he was. He's the director. He says, listen, I, I'm starting a second evangelistic team. We have one. I want a second one because we're growing. We're prospering. And I want you to direct it. I said, huh? He said, yeah, I want you to be in charge of it. I was there a whole year. Nobody noticed me. Nobody called me out. Nobody said, share your testimony. Nobody said, we want to hear from this man. He, but now this director comes to me and says, I want you to direct. I'm going to give you a van, 16 passengers. I'm going to give you one of our credit cards that belongs to the program. Fill it up with gas. If you need to buy some food. And I want you to pick 16 men. You pick them out. The ones you feel are right. And I want you to be the director. And go out there and raise funds and share the gospel and solicit and preach the word. And I got ready. I stood there four years doing that as the director successfully. 
You sow a seed. My seed was just, let me pray. Let me just seek the face of God. I'm not looking for popularity. I wasn't looking to be recognized. I wasn't looking to be first or to shine or to be a star. I just wanted to be in God's presence. That's what happened with King David when he was in the backside of the desert. He was taking care of his father's sheep, playing the harp and singing psalms. The psalms that we read today of folk songs that he was writing. He wasn't no looking to be famous or anything, but the opportunity came when Goliath, without a Goliath, you would not have a King David. When Goliath I've showed up, the big monster, the big giant, the big Godzilla. Uh, David ran up to the battle and said, hey, what's going on over here? He said, this big dude, man, this big doofus is defying and we're all paralyzed, scared. He said, let me at him. He ran towards the battle because he already had practice with the lion and the bear and singing and worshiping God. He was ready. He knew the God of the creation. He said, let me, let me take care of this dude for you, man. And he went and got a stone and he shot the stone from a slingshot. Got the stone from the brook. Knocked the giant down and he became David. The Bible says that Saul killed a thousand and David killed ten thousand. He became famous and known and he became king after that. My friend, you just keep sowing the seed of love, the seed of patience, the seed of joy, the seed of intercessory prayer. Keep doing well. Don't be weary. God will prosper you. The opportunities will come for you to grow, for you to shine, for you to be the head and not the tail. I don't know about you, my friend, and I'm going to sow a seed of love. I don't want jailhouse religion. I don't want phony religion and conversion. I want to seek the face of God. The Bible says, Jesus said, well done, that great and faithful servant. He didn't say, well done, bishop. Well done, prophet. Well done, minister. Well done, preacher. Well done, evangelist. He said, well done, faithful servant. I just want to be a servant. Keep the title, man. Use it. When you go to the bathroom, you may need it. But in the meantime, I'm just going to serve God and be a servant of the most high God. Can you say amen with me, somebody? I'm about finished. Don't be a phony baloney like a brother Tony. Serve the Lord from your heart. Seek his face. Sow the seed. Righteousness, you reap a good harvest. Mm -mm. The third and the Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody listening to me right under the sign of my boy that you touch them, that you heal them, that you deliver them though, by the power of the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, man. Mm -mm 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 -mm.